Hello, I'm Dr. Rishali Thakkar, Junior Resident at Sir JJ Group of Hospitals and Grand Government Medical College, Mumbai. My topic is Role of MRI in Characterization of Ovarian Lesions. Ovarian masses are frequently encountered in routine clinical practice, often detected incidentally or in symptomatic patients. When sim- symptomatic, they can present with a range of non-specific symptoms that vary depending on the size of the lesion. Of these, the most common symptoms are abdominal or pel- pelvic pain, and abdominal distension and the most commonly done serum marker is CA-125. Ultrasound is often the first imaging modality performed because it is widely available, non-invasive and of low cost. However, MRI helps to confirm and provide additional information in characterization of the lesions. ORADS helps to determine the risk of malignancy. However, based on morphological appearance and tissue composition, further characterization is possible. Based on morphological appearance, adnexal masses can be divided into four main groups, which is uh, unilocular cyst, multilocular cyst, complex, which contains both solid and cystic components, and predominantly solid. The lesions can be further characterized by signal intensity features, that is, hemorrhagic areas, elevated protein content, fat, collagenous tissue, and enhancement pattern. Now, I have a few commonly encountered cases of which the first case is of a 48-year-old unmarried nulli gravida with occasional pain in abdomen since 7 months. The images show a large abdominopelvic unilocular cystic lesion with enhancing wall. There is no fat content differential intensity within the cyst or solid component which favors serous cyst adenoma. Case 2 is a 27-year-old P2L2A1 patient with intermittent pain over left side of lower abdomen since 3 months and which was aggravated since past 8 days. The images show bulky left ovary with two cysts showing fluid fluid levels and appearing hyper intense on T1 which suggests presence of blood. Left ovary does not show post-contrast enhancement. Features therefore suggest endometriotic cyst with necrosis and chronic torsion of left ovary. Case 3 is a 65-year-old female with complaints of abdominal pain and tenderness since one month. Images show multiloculated cystic left nexal lesion with variable signal intensity in the locutes on both T2 and T1 weighted images giving typical stained glass appearance and which also suggest mucinous content within. Features favor mucinous cyst adenoma carcinoma. Case 4 is a 39-year-old female with irregular menses since 3 years. Images show a well-defined thin wall lesion in the left, left ovary where peripheral aspect appears hyperintense on T1 and T2 weighted images and show fat suppression on T1 fat uh, saturation sequence. Presence of fat intensity favors mature cystic teratoma. Case 5 is a 64-year-old postmenopausal female with abdominal pain, bloating and abdominal distension since 15 days. So one can see large solid cystic tumors arising from bilateral adnexa. The solid component shows diffusion restriction and post-contrast enhancement. Mild ascites with diffuse or mental caking and nodular deposits were also present on abdominal screening and features favor serous cyst adenocarcinoma. Case 6 is a 26-year-old null, unmarried nulli gravida who came with gradually progressive pain in abdomen since one month, which was aggravated during menses. History of weight loss was also present. Images show a large multiloculated solid cystic abdominopelvic mass with cystic component of various intensities, peripheral contrast enhancement and solid component showing diffusion restriction and heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. Features favor mucinous cyst adenoma, carcinoma. Case 7 is a 40-year-old female with pain in abdomen and fever on and off since 2 months. Patient was first diagnosed as PID with tubo-ovarian abscess. However, on further investigation, abdominal cox was ruled out. So, MRI was done which showed A solid cystic lesion with solid component showing diffusion restriction. There is also post-contrast enhancement of the cyst wall and the solid component. Similar lesion was also seen on the left side. Gross ascites or mental caking, peritoneal deposits and gross right-sided pleural effusion was also present. Features therefore favor neoplastic etiology and patient was later diagnosed as serious cyst adenocarcinoma. Case 8 is a 39-year-old female who had come with abdominal pain and abdominal wall abscess with ulcer and pus discharge from the ulcer side. Now the images 
शो अ सॉलिड सिस्टिक राइट एग नेगजल लीजन विथ सिस्टिक कंपोनेंट शोइंग सेंट्रल डिफ्यूजन रेस्ट्रिक्शन एंड सॉलिड कंपोनेंट हैविंग पोस्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट इन्हांसमेंट विदाउट डिफ्यूजन रेस्ट्रिक्शन फीचर्स फेवर इन्फेक्शन नाउ ट्रांसरेक्टल बायोप्सी वॉज लेटर डन विच रूल्ड आउट मेलेग्नेंसी एंड पेशेंट विच वॉज इवेंचुअली स्टार्टेड ऑन एंटी ट्यूबरकुलर रेजिमेन केस नाइन इज अ सिक्सटी ईयर ओल्ड पोस्ट मेनोपोजल फीमेल विथ पेन इन एबडोमन एंड लो ग्रेड फीवर सिंस टू मंथ्स इमेजेस शो अ लार्ज एबडोमिनोपेलविक टी टू टी वन वेटेड हाइपो इंटेंस सॉलिड लीजन विथ पैची एरियाज ऑफ डिफ्यूजन रेस्ट्रिक्शन एंड कॉन्ट्रास्ट इन्हांसमेंट फीचर्स फेवर फाइब्रोमा थीकोमा चेंजेस ऑफ डिफ्यूज एडिनोमाइसिस आर ऑल्सो सीन Now ovarian masses can thus exhibit a diverse array of morph- morphological characteristic some of the key imaging features that could be of help in differential diagnosis of ovarian masses are so uh, we divided morphologically as a, uh, uh, ovarian lesions as cystic complex with both the solid and cystic component and predominantly solid now when cystic it can be unilocular or multilocular in unilocular when they are less than 3 cm they are functional cyst more than 3 cm uh, one uh, it can be a simple cyst and when they are when they are extremely large uh, diagnosis of cyst adenoma is considered a uh, presence of t1 hyper intensity within the cyst indicates a hemorrhagic or endometriotic cyst when multilocular it is a cyst adenoma now epithelial ovarian tumors are the most common of which cyst adenomas are the most common benign epithelial tumors which typically manifest as thin walled unilocular or multilocular cyst now see the cyst adenoma typically are unilocular with thin walls often appearing bilaterally while mucinous cyst adenomas tend to be larger and multilocular featuring cystic locules with mucin within and thus resembling a stained glass appearance distinguishing between a borderline and malignant cystic tumor tumors is difficult however it relies on the presence of solid components irregular thick wall and septum these features are more frequently observed in malignant tumors whereas borderline tumors typically uh, lack secondary signs of malignancy such as ascites and omental caking now when complex lesion uh, when the complex lesion has a solid component which shows heterogeneous enhancement and diffusion restriction it indicates epithelial cell tumors of which cyst adenoma and cyst adenocarcinoma are the most common now if the cystic component shows diffusion restriction it points towards abscess uh, suggesting tubo ovarian abscess and due to high prevalence of tuberculosis in india tubo ovarian abscess needs to be considered and differentiated from malignancy as ascites and omental caking are overlapping features if the solid component uh, shows fat intensity teratoma is to be considered if it is a predominantly solid lesion with very low signal intensity on t2 weighted images it suggests presence of fibrotic component indicating thicoma fibroma cyst adenofibromas or brennan tumor uh, if the solid uh, component uh, shows fat intensity it is teratoma and if it is a complex enhancing mass which is present in both the ovaries and eventually if an unknown primary is identified identified it is metastasis so while characterizing the lesion may not always be feasible necess- necessitating histopathological confirmation commonly encountered tumors often man- manifest distinctive features that aid in the diagnosis through mri making it a valuable diagnostic tool for pre operative evaluation of ovarian masses Thank you.